Revenge Films. My name is Haley. I am living together with my husband, Reggie, but I've been struggling with infertility for nine years since Reggie and I got married. Without having any children, I've been working in the same company as the one I've been working for before I got married. I just got promoted to a position in the company. I earned more than my husband did, so I paid more than he did for our living expenses. My parents-in-law and my sister-in-law together with her children are living near our house. However, my sister-in-law told me, I'll let you experience what it's like to have children. And that's her reason for making me take care of her children whenever she wants. So I was struggling with my relationship with my sister-in-law. There were plenty of times when I was asked to babysit her children in their house, but my husband wanted to have children, so he was happy to babysit his niece and nephew, and that is why he never really tried to even think of how I felt. My mother passed away when I was in high school, and I think my father is still alive somewhere in this world, but I have no idea where he is. My parents-in-law say to me, I will allow you to show filial piety to us, since you weren't able to do so to your birth parents. Just like that, they gave me time and financial burden, no different from how my sister-in-law did. Even though I'm struggling with his family members, my husband says to me, It's good that you have a proper family now, isn't it? My husband thought that I was happy to do the things my mother-in-law and sister-in-law said that they allowed me to do. Just when I was getting sick and tired of such a living situation, I was in poor physical condition for a while. I thought it was just because of the stress, so I didn't really bother much about it. However, I didn't get well after several days, so I decided to go to the hospital to get checked. The results came in, and I was diagnosed with a pituitary tumor. The doctor told me that because of that, I only had about a year left. At first, I was a bit shaken and depressed, so I had trouble acting normally. However, since I didn't trust my husband and his family, I never told them about my health problem and the very limited time I have left in this world, so I desperately tried to look nonchalant. At around the same time, my husband told me about us living together with his parents. He said that he wanted a huge duplex so that we can live together with his other family members, but I couldn't say yes and agree to that because of my illness. Then one day, something happened that brought about a change in the way I felt. My sister-in-law's eldest daughter is in her second year of middle school. I used to babysit and take care of my niece when she was younger. However, now that my niece is in puberty, she now treats me rudely. Ever since she was a little girl, my niece has been acting exactly like her mother. She belittles me and makes fun of me often. I suddenly received a call from my niece out of the blue. She told me to come immediately to the nearby fast food restaurant. She sounded distressed on the phone, so I ran as fast as I could to the fast food restaurant. When I arrived, I saw my niece together with her eight other friends. Are you all right? What happened? Worried, I asked my niece, to which she responded, whispering in my ear. Please pay for all our food. That's all she told me. Hey, everyone. This woman here is kind of like a mother to me. She takes care of me when my mother is not around to do so, and she treats me like her daughter. She's feeling very generous today, and she told me she'll be treating us all. My birth mother is stingy and irritating, but this woman here is a good person, so eat as much as you want. Everything's on her. Don't hesitate, girls. Hey, you never told me this before. Why am I suddenly treating everyone? You say that, but you actually feel happy because it feels like the daughter you never had is relying on you, right? Hurry up and pay for the food. My niece brazenly said that to me, and she kicked the back of my calf while laughing like a maniac. The moment she did that, I felt like something inside me snapped. I walked past the cashier and ran across the road. I grabbed a taxi from the road across the fast food restaurant. When I arrived home, I got call after call from my niece so persistently, but I also ignored that. I finally had enough and I ran out of patience, so I promised myself to get revenge on my husband's family. In order to take revenge, I first had to agree to buy a duplex, which my husband and my mother-in-law were very excited about. My sister-in-law insisted that she won't pay any money because she is just living together with her parents. But despite that, my sister-in-law had many demands about the new house, and when her demands were not accepted, she always got angry. But I even met those demands. My niece probably complained to her mother. A few days later, I received a call from my sister-in-law. Hello, Haley. I heard from my daughter that you ignored and abandoned my daughter who was having trouble. 
She's very upset right now. How dare you step all over my daughter's feelings when she just wanted to make you feel like a mother. What? She kicked me. Are you saying that shutting up and spoiling your daughter is what you call parental love? Shut up! Stop making excuses and just apologize to my daughter. My husband used to always take his sister's side 100%, but maybe it's because we're in the middle of discussing about living together with his parents and other family members. Surprisingly, he took my side this time. My husband was worried that I might change my mind and disagree about the whole family living together in a duplex, so I decided to use him for my game. A few months later, after the contract for the duplex had been finalized, when the house is now only left to be decorated, I resigned from my job. The loan is so expensive that my husband can't afford it with his earnings alone. So we planned that I pay 55% while my husband would pay 45%. The down payment was paid entirely with our deposits as a couple. Despite being very lazy and can't be bothered with work, both my sister-in-law and mother-in-law are very extravagant. So even if they add up all their savings, their wealth is almost non-existent. My husband can't afford to pay the load with his money alone. And my parents-in-law do not receive pension benefits and my sister-in-law only works part-time. Knowing all that information, I signed a contract for a house with my husband. So, of course, I had an assumption of what would happen to my husband after I'm gone. While I was sorting out my affairs in order, I found pictures of my husband and me filled with memories. Seeing those pictures, I remember those times when I still loved my husband. While lost in thought over those memories, I threw them all away without exception. My husband never noticed at all about the changes in my physical condition, as well as when I was getting my personal affairs in order. I guess it's because there were no feelings left. I might cause a bit of trouble to my birth father who abandoned me, so I thought that it's just fair since he caused a lot of trouble to me, since he abandoned me as a child. Then, when I started to feel the light of my physical strength, I canceled my life insurance. All preparations have been completed just before the duplex was finished. Until then, I was hiding my health problems despite struggling to go about my daily life. I finally collapsed and was brought to the hospital. That's when my husband learned for the first time that I don't have long to live. When he heard that from the doctor, he didn't know what to do and became speechless. He was in a daze for a while. My husband then went to his parents' house and he told his family in tears that I didn't have long. The next day, my in-laws and sister-in-law stormed into my room in the hospital with menacing looks on their faces. I can't believe that you don't have long in this world, just before the house is nearly finished. Since when did you know about your situation? Why didn't you tell us about such an important matter? What are we going to do from now on? How dare you pull a victim card right now? You're aware that we don't have any savings, right? Looking at the two of them enraged in front of a patient, I truly felt glad deep inside of my heart that I thought of and executed this plan. I thought of taking my revenge this way, that day when your daughter did that horrible thing to me. If it weren't for what she did to me that day, I don't think I would have done this to all of you. What? You've got to be kidding me. So that would mean it's this girl's fault? What do you mean? Explain it to us properly. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law scolded my niece, so my niece cried and apologized to me. She then received ill treatment from her family and all their relatives. After seeing that, I felt refreshed inside, so my revenge on my niece is over. Every time my husband comes to visit me in the hospital, he cries and apologizes. He asked me if there was no way that I'd be saved, but everything is too late. Please, Haley, don't leave me! Are you only saying that because you're worried about the duplex loan? That's not the only reason. I was so looking forward to having a baby with you and being a family, but why did this happen? If I knew that this was going to happen, I should have taken care of you more. You should have realized that before you lost me. What a pity. Don't talk about losing you! What am I going to do? I'll be gone soon, so don't ask me. It's time for you to think about things by yourself. I was in a situation where I only had about a month left in my life. As I watched my in-laws driven to ruin, I said to myself, Karma finally served them right. I didn't want my life to end while I was still married to my husband, so our divorce was granted while I was still in the hospital. Since I already canceled my insurance, I will be paying a lot for hospital costs, so I decided to demand alimony from my husband, as well as his family for moral harassment. When I explained what happened to a lawyer who is an acquaintance, he 
He was very accommodating and worked with me, making sure that the matter wasn't causing me too much burden. Thanks to the help of my lawyer friend, I received a huge amount of alimony from my husband, my mother-in-law, and my sister-in-law. After that, the house they've always wanted to have was immediately sold because they weren't able to pay the remaining house loan. My ex-husband and his family are now burdened with a huge amount of debt, and it ended up ruining the rest of their lives. My husband bore a grudge against his mother and sister, who treated me very badly, and he cut ties with his family. His family was dragged out of their previous house because it was sold. I heard that the six of them moved into a very small apartment with only two rooms. I felt refreshed after being able to take my revenge on them. I decided to live my remaining years in the hospital. However, I noticed that I was feeling better and better every day, so I started walking around the hospital to get some exercise. I was feeling surprised by how I was physically getting better. Then one day, the test revealed that the disease had stopped progressing. With the help of the medicine and some light exercises that I did to gain strength, I was able to recover to the point that I could now undergo surgery. The surgery was a success, and after three months, I was finally discharged from the hospital. I then started living by myself. By the way, my ex-husband doesn't know that I survived that illness and that I am still alive. Having cut ties with my ex-husband and his family, I used the alimony money that I received from them for my living expenses for a while. Then, after a few more months, the doctor told me that I can now get back to work, so I decided to go back to the company where I worked. Now that I have taken my freedom back, I am now living my second chance at life with a positive outlook. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.